Don't you just love seeing liberals crying about what they voted and advocated for? Check this out from Mayor Eric Adams in New York City. I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. Every community in this city is going to be impacted. The city we knew, we're about to lose. That's uh, pretty telling right there. He's saying that this problem issue will destroy New York City. He knows it. It's funny he changed his tune from when he, when he was on the campaign trail. He said New York City will stay a sanctuary city. We will welcome these people in. Doesn't feel that way now that Greg Abbott uh, has been busing thousands of people to the city. Eric Adams is frustrated with the zero support he's getting from the Biden administration, but looks like he wants to have it both ways by also pointing a finger at Texas. Go item for item on what Eric Adams ran on as a candidate and then look at what we've accomplished in 20 months. We turned this city around in 20 months. And then what happened? Started with a madman down in Texas, decided he wanted to bust people up to New York City. In the first day of school here in New York City, and the classrooms are swamped with some 21,000 non-English speaking migrant children. And the Biden Department of Education says it's on the schools to find teachers that can communicate with all of them. The cover of the post summing this up as a kick in the id, which if you're British, that sounds very good. Okay, so Adams wanted Jesse to not blame Biden directly. He wanted to sort of like the indirect blame and sort of wants the Republicans to have to take the blame at the same time. But he's so unwilling to say that the root cause problem that Biden won't deal with is the reason. He's almost there. The message is clear. Joe Biden's going to see that. And that was probably the most passionate I've ever Listen to what Jesse has to say about this. Never seen a politician all year. Never seen that kind of emotion. That was like a call to arms, a cry for help all at the same time. And it's clear when you drive into the city or you walk around, we're overwhelmed. You now have sidewalks you can't walk past because they are stuffed full of migrant families. It looks like a foreign capital in certain sections of this city. You don't recognize the city anymore. It's just not what you're used to. They're not New Yorkers. They're not even tourists. They're from third world countries, and they're not assimilating. A lot of them are not working. And there is a crime issue. We had a guy who was arrested like seven times from Venezuela assaulting people. He's a basket case. We do not have a grip on the situation. And it's going to cost the city a fortune because you're giving everybody free stuff. They get free education. Uh, they get free health care, and they get free syringes. They get free room and board. They get free food. Uh, thank God it's um, culturally appropriate meals. See, this is the problem with illegal immigration. You have people coming here who don't assimilate. They, you see the streets of New York, how they look. You saw the video of that. Um, then a lot of them are not working. A lot of them are getting resources, like free stuff, education, and things like that. Um, and they're coming from the third world countries and bringing that culture to our streets. That's the problem. A lot of them are committing crimes, violent crimes. I don't have a problem with people coming here the right way and assimilating. I don't have a problem with that at all. This is a problem. This is what we talk about when we see a problem with illegal immigration. We're not talking about people that want to come here, assimilate, become a citizen, do the right thing. We're not talking about that. But the guy's tried everything. He tried Randall's Island, and then he tried putting up at Five Stars in Midtown, and then he tried shipping them upstate to Buffalo, and nothing is working. And you'd think Schumer had a little more juice because he's the senior senator. He's the Senate majority leader. He can't get on the phone with the president and say, something's got to give here, Mr. President. <clears throat> this city is beyond repair because I agree. There's no stopping this. No. And, Greg, I'm wondering if this debate could end up making the situation work, because one of the things that... May now, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll kind of touch on what um, Greg Gutfeld had to say. He said that what Greg Abbott did is what he married the uh, 
the policy to the consequence. Liberals don't think about consequences when it comes to their their ideas with um, sanctuary cities, uh, giving out free stuff, green all this green nonsense, electric cars for everybody, wind and solar for everything, get away from fossil fuels. They don't think about the consequences that this that these things have, the impact, the negative impacts. But what we did by busing people to these liberal cities, these sanctuary cities, I should say, uh, kind of both actually, um, is we're marrying the consequence uh, with the policy, and now they're seeing the consequences of their policies, and it's crippling their cities. Now they have to deal with it. They ask for it. Check this out from Chicago. Citizens crying out because of uh, people, uh, illegal immigrants coming to their city. All these resources that have not come to us, now you want to overly compensate for people who've never lived here before, and they we need to be taken care of first and foremost before anything else happens here. Why would any leader put our black communities already riddled with crime at further risk by placing unvetted non-taxpayers steps away from our sen our seniors, our children, and our homes we've worked so hard on our own to secure. How many of these people in the background or speaking voted Democrat? How many of them vote Democrat? You know, Democrats vote 90% Democrat. I mean, black people vote 90% Democrat, roughly. How many of these people voted for the politicians that advocated for this nonsense? We are at war, people. Our communities are at war. They are violating our communities, and we asking that we have, we across the country, we asking and we demanding for office of black America, whatever you want to call it, to deal with issues like this. Uh, I did get placed on a wait list but I was told that the immigrants were taking priority. See, that's a story that a lot of people don't know, and it just, it hurts me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I understand we need to be humanitarian, but these people are, that my participants are third and fourth generation Chicagoans, born, bred, fed, and raised here. My grandmother, Mayrella Carrington, rest in peace, always said, Craig, charity starts at home first, and then it go abroad. Politically, having over 500 people in our community would completely wipe out any interest we have. Many of these migrants have been dumped in our neighborhoods without a plan in place to monitor and house them long term. I'm not selling nothing. And I keep telling people, if you don't have to move, if you sell, they're going to come in. If we don't sell, we got to stand strong. That's right. She's, like, she's not going anywhere. She's not selling anything. I, I, I assume she's talking about her home, I guess, but she's not selling because as soon as you sell, they're going to start coming in and taking over. <laughs> you just get started. I guarantee, probably, you know, I don't know how many of these people voted, but I guarantee 90% of them at least voted Democrat. This is crazy. This is what they get. Now, it's funny that Los Angeles, uh, after Abbott started busing uh, people to his, to that city, that sanctuary city, and letting them feel uh, the strain of their policies, the negative impacts of the policies that they advocated for, after they approved lawsuit against Texas, Abbott decided to send a 12th bus full of migrants. And see, this is why Greg Abbott is being so effective. He's not backing down on this. I give him a lot of credit for this. Um, is he doing everything he can to, to shut down the problem at the border? I, I don't know. A lot of people that don't think he is, some think he's doing a great job. Um, but the one thing that people give him credit for, no matter what side, if you think he's doing a great job or not on the border, is this busing strategy was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. You know, the floating barrier, the barrier, all that stuff, and uh, that may or may not be working, but 
sending uh, people to these cities, the migrants to these cities, these sanctuary cities who advocate for this stuff, this is working because now it's bringing attention um, to the problem. And now you have Democrats crying out for help. So you have people from uh, uh, Nicaragua, Guatemala, which uh, where my dad is from, Honduras, Mexico, Russia, Venezuela, and Colombia. So you have Russians coming up to the border. Um, this is fantastic. I think he's done a great job as far as bringing the attention, uh, bringing attention to the problem. And at first, I thought it was more of a political stunt. I thought he was just trying to get reelected, and that's what a lot of people were thinking as well. Liberals were saying he's just trying to get the, you know, rally his MAGA base, trying to rally the, the, the Republicans there in Texas. And I was a little skeptical of what his, uh, if he was going to do it or not. I, I didn't think he was going to do it, or I thought he would stop after he got reelected. He's pre uh, kept his uh, foot on the gas on this issue. Here are the numbers here with Operation Lone Star, which has um, an effort to cut down the illegal immigration and, and to fight back against you know drugs and things like that. Uh, 435,000 apprehensions, 34,000 criminal arrests, 30,900 felony charges are reported, and Texas has seized over 428 million lethal doses of fentanyl during the mission uh, that started in 2021. As far as the busing is concerned, 11,300 migrants have shipped, been uh, bused to D.C. A lot of them dropped off right in front of, in front of Kamala Harris's home. 13,500 to New York City, which is why Eric Adams is complaining, uh, talking about the madman down in Texas, because he, we've sent 13,000 people to that city. And it took some time before it really started... Uh, they start really seeing a notice, uh, a difference in their city and the resources, uh, the strain is put on their city. 7,000 to Chicago, <laughs> gosh, 2,600 to Philadelphia, 1,100 to Denver, which you don't really hear about, but he's still doing it, um, 480 to Los Angeles. Now, he sent 480 to Los Angeles, a city of 4 million people, and they're a sanctuary city. They can't handle 480 new people. For some reason, they want to sue our governor here in Texas over this um, this strategy. Because Operation Lone Star contains to fill the dangerous gaps created by the Biden administration's refusal to secure the border. Uh, we'll get into that in another video of what Operation Lone Star is doing. But this is a, a big problem here, and this is why we this is probably the main reason why we can't have illegal immigration in our country. A migrant commits 14 crimes in two months within two months of arriving to New York. This man right here, uh, yes, I will call him a thug because he is a thug. For some people, or for some reason, people get offended when I say that. Sorry, if you're committing crimes, assaulting people, robbing people, you're a thug. Anyway, let's keep going. A man who, has entered, uh, who entered New York City just two months ago after living in Venezuela has become a poster boy for the migrant crisis after he was arrested six separate times, often for violent attacks. This might have been who Jesse Waters was talking about. Um, he arrived in the city about two months ago, coming on June 27th. 29-year-old Danny Hernandez Martinez reportedly committed his first crime during his second day in New York City, when he has, was said to have stolen merchandise from a Brook, uh, Brooklyn Costco. He then hit up a Dwayne Reed in Manhattan's uh, Columbus Circle. I don't know what that is. A day later, he, uh, he allegedly assaulted a security guard at a different Dwayne Reed location. Wow. He's been wreaking havoc, stated a cop with over 20 years of experience. It's not isolate, an isolated incident. These migrants are getting arrested quite often here. And we don't we really don't know who they are. They don't have ID. They're not being vetted properly, but some of them are coming uh, committing some of the most violent crimes here. Uh, he pulled out an, a large knife and advanced toward an, un, an undercover officer. This is nuts. July 31st, uh, he used a bike to attack a 52-year-old man named Jeffrey Braddock. Police said the attack took place in front of, of Rowe Hotel, a migrant shelter in Times Square. Uh, he said, hit me with the... the Officer said, hit me with the bike, the bike tire. He tried to call the police. 
And then he jumped uh, the dumpster, and a really fit car ran after him, but he got away. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is the problem. If, if you vet people properly, uh, this country will be in much better shape. But if you have unfettered illegal immigration, you have no idea who's coming through. No idea who's, idea who's coming through and what kind of problems they're going to cause across the country. So that's why it's important for us to continue to bus people to these cities because they need to feel the pain of the things that they voted for and that they advocated for. Um, and then, uh, I, didn't, I didn't play this part, but um, Greg Gutfield said, next we have to have uh, some tough law enforcement officers or people in law enforcement and start taking criminals and dropping them off in the neighborhoods of these DAs who are laying them out because we're going to hit rock bottom. And once we hit rock bottom, we can go back up. We can fix this country. But we have to bring... Uh, they have to feel some kind of pain. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes that is physical, but they need to feel uh, the pain with as far as resources being used, the quality of life being lowered and destroyed in their neighborhoods by certain people like criminals, people committing violent acts, people robbing people, people bringing their third world problems over here. That's when we'll see a change because people will start to wake up and say, you know what, something they'll start out crying for help like we're seeing in these videos I played for you. So no, I'm not anti-immigration. That's see, A lot of people will think the haters will come on, come on here and say, Oh, you're um, you're an Uncle Tom. Um, you're a white supremacist. They'll call me all kinds of names, uh, but they don't understand where I'm coming from. They think they think because I'm half Guatemalan that I have to be all for illegal immigration. That's not. That's actually kind of stupid to think that. I want people to come here the right way and do the right thing, and assimilate, and uh, enjoy our way of living here in the United States. Enjoy the, the the things that we have with the economic the economic opportunity that we have here, but um, if you come here with third world problems, you know, and, and you live a certain way here, you're gonna make it a lot harder for everybody else. That's my two cents on this. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you. Take care.